Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here for the conclusion on our 6-inch K&T. <laughs> All right, I basically was calling it a 6-inch K&T because we mounted this Bison 6-inch three-jaw chuck on here. All right, now I've taken it over to the bridge port, set up the index head, and went ahead and drilled the three-hole pattern and countersunk the Allens, Allen head, short Allens on the back side. Uh, because I didn't have the long Allens that came in on the front. And these chucks are outfitted to bolt it either way, through the face or from the back. And I just had the bolts to be able to do the back uh, mount. And I'll probably take some Delrin diameter rounds. And I'll probably put them in there just so that those are not pockets for stuff to get caught in. All right, I've put a half inch dowel pin in the three jaw. I brought these over here and I wanna pull those jaws apart and clean it because I haven't cleaned that chuck in a while. Uh, I have used this on occasion and what I was doing with this small chuck before I had the Rutland up and running and I was without a small lathe, I actually put that uh, in the chuck over in the big lathe and I was able to grab small parts that I needed to over there. That's the only time I've used this this chuck. This chuck came on one of those Chinese uh, ratchet indexers which this is the best part out of the whole thing. Um, they, they did put a nice bison chuck on them. The rest of it went into the dumpster. Alright, it wasn't China's best. Uh, and and I I took it apart and thought I could help it, but not even I could help it. So anyway, let's come in here a little closer. We're going to set up an indicator. We're going to look at the run out on this three jaw. Okay, I'm going to take a Noga and set it here on the mill table. And loosen this up here so we can get this. There we go. We'll get it in a position where you get to see it here. And I do have to make sure that I don't have anything hitting in the back side here. Something like that. I know it's not pushing straight in, but okay. We're running about a half a thousandths right there. All right, and I haven't cleaned this chuck yet. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscroll it. We're going to clean out all the chips and everything else. We're going to bolt on the other part of the jaws. And then we'll put that back in and we'll see if it's any better. But still, if it's within a half a thousandths for a three jaw to, you know, set up there, I'm happy. All right. Here's, here's my motion of my T-wrench without hitting this face here, okay? So it's like having a big square head uh, lathe. Sometimes the Rutland uh, T-handle is a little bit long on the headstock actually rubbing there but uh um have a little extension but we'd still only have an open window here so i gotta kind of hold it off to the side here which is no big deal if you got a good t-handle you can freely spin it as well and let's see that's three two one okay so this will be the first one to come out second one third one all right there is some debris there's a pretty good chip in on that one there so it's not the cleanest chuck so let's go ahead and blow that off i'll spare you the air noise i kind of blew everything out <clears throat> now i want to go ahead and i want to spin it because i want to clean up this uh outside little light rust area there and I'm going to fire it up and I'm just going to hold some 100 emery on here. I'm going to get a rag to wipe over or uh, hang over my ways there. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, I want it to go the other direction. I want uh, it to go down away from there. There we go. All 
All right, that's looking pretty stiffy. All right, we're putting that in slow. That way I can freely spin this. All right, this is three, one. Okay, one there, all right? Let me line up my chuck jaws here. There's two in the middle. I blew them off and kind of just set them here. There's one, there's three. One, two, three. Actually, that side looks a little little dirty in there, so we're going to take care of that. Okay, I took my brush and I kind of brushed it. There's a light coat of grease in there and a light coat of grease on here. And sometimes you uh, you blow things off with the air and you're not you're not getting it. The, the air's not going to lift that suction that grease has on there. All right, three and there's one. Uh, so here's one. All right, we back it up till we see the start of the scroll. We push it in, we make sure it grips, and then we watch the scroll come up here to two. Same there. And our last one, number three. All right, we're gonna get our Allen wrench and we're gonna put those on. Number two, and the last one, number three. Okay, and go ahead and we scroll it on down here. go there we go okay and we're still within that half a thousandth with the extended jaws on there that's excellent Bring it on in here a little closer to see what we're at. Okay, it lessened a tiny bit, but it's still about a half a thousandth. All right, we're happy with our new chuck mount. After our first two videos and reading through the comments, which I want to thank everybody that uh, participates in the comments, giving, giving different ideas and or asking different questions. So let's just go ahead and take questions, not necessarily in order or of importance or in the way that they were stated. One question was, why go through this effort to make this a lathe function when you have the big K and T and you have the Rutland lathe in the other room? And simply because we're not we're not trying to turn this into a production lathe. We the, there's that's just not feasible on here and and rightfully the question what you know that's what created the question in the beginning by putting a chuck on here we're able to take this universal mill and give it another aspect that might be used in the tricks of running an HBM and a lot of HBMs you can mount up a chuck on them and then you have a nice big moving table where you can place a rotary table on here so you can chuck up on a component like a, uh, a spherical steam valve or a spherical object that you might be machining on and you can match or duplicate that that radius and in a real true smooth control with a rotary table and you can even have some of the rotary tables uh, with a, a small um, automatic drive on them and things like that to where you really get that smooth arc uh, spherical cut and very very good cut quality on it and precision of setting that up and that is one one of many tricks that can be used on a milling machine with chucking capabilities this could be a four jaw also it doesn't have to be a three jaw um, so 
Now, you lose by having this mounted on the number 40 and the draw bar and everything else. You lost your through hole on, on it. And most lays the benefit of a lathe is to be able to feed lengths of material down through the, uh, the spindle and hold the end you're working on and move it and work on, you know, many parts to follow. Um, but not to say that you don't chuck on individual components, but here again, if you got just an item that you want to chuck on and then create that. Now, that's with the main spindle coming out in a horizontal position. Now, let's go ahead and pull this chuck off of here, and we're going to swing our universal head over here, and then we're going to show you what the chuck looks like in our universal head, and changing the table and a couple other things that will let us get another variety of ways of cutting with the universal head on. One of the questions put there was, what's your swing on this now? Well, let's fire this up. Let's drop it on down to the end of the travel on the knee. And I got 21 inches there, so that looks like 42 inches. Okay, but look how low our tool post is here. So every time you adjust your height or whatever to make clearance on your knee, you're going to have to adjust this height for your tool bit if you want to cut on center. Also, the length or the object that you can turn and clear the table, I mean, you only have like four inches to the table, but if you're over the table, then that can extend out. Another group of questions and comments was all based on using the overarm support as a center. And you take that. This is a self-aligning adjustable bushing. So you can take a round diameter here and then you can undo your adjustment keeper and you can tighten this onto a bore to be snug. You can machine an OD to fit here, an ID for your number four Morris taper in this case here on this center here, and then be able to pop that in there, and then you can adjust your center in here to go ahead and hold the end of your extended part if you wanted to. Now, the table only travels 10 inches roughly in and out, but you can reposition your compound or your tool bit to machine and grab a little bit more than just that 10 inch travel if you wanted to. We pulled out our chuck and we put in our adapter, got our universal head up here. Now this flat surface right here comes in handy to dial your head in. If you didn't know what this flat surface was, it, part of it is probably part of their jigging, but this is within thousands of being parallel to the axis at least on this one here I double checked it all right and I use it generally to do a quick location so I'm going to use this surface to set this up to be 90 in that direction Okay, I leave the head loose like that, and then I kind of crank it up here like that, close, hand crank it, and you'll see it, see it self align itself, I go up and down a couple times. Okay, with it there, and it's not rocking, no great pressure on it, I just kind of tighten up. Bring the table down. Okay, now the head's set up 90. I know within at least a couple 
All right, I'm gonna bring you around to the side. All right, we're set up. We're gonna install the chuck now into our universal head here. And we're gonna check the run out on that little pin. and grab our indicator here okay um, do we come in and out and set our change our zero we could do that if we want to for those that <laughs> of you that have to be on zero all right let's put this in neutral all right Not, I thought maybe a little play, nothing, but uh, it's running a half a thousandths right here, right now. All right, so there's no need for us to do any concern about the bore on the spindle here. And uh, let's go ahead and see what uh, she looks like running up on speed here. We're at like 529 on our speed here. Uh, if we put it in fast. There we go. All right, I think we're ready to put a piece of material in here. All right, this is a piece of two and a quarter, or two and three quarter, I believe it is. Two and three quarter inch, Aquamet 22. Pretty stout stuff. It's stainless with a little more molybdenum and nickel than uh, your average stainless. It is real tough. It's what I machine stainless steel marine shafting out of and it takes an enormous amount of tool pressure to cut this all right let's take a look at our insert here well it's not chipped or anything so we're gonna go ahead and give it a run move that out of the way all right let's uh come on over to the edge here we're gonna back out we think we were on center, but not quite sure. We're just going to come in here and touch, and we're going to look at our scale. And it looks like we're on center. We've got a slight little bit of leaning out. I'd rather be just a slightly below. All right, let's look at our angle of approach here. Something like that. All right, everything uh, moves freely. All right, we're on the uh, three and a half inches per minute, like we were facing off that flange for the backing plate there. Well, I'm gonna get Toby's uh, indicator holder he made up for me on the K&T, so. All right, this is uh, this is my indicator that uh, Toby made me, and I'm just gonna slip it on here real quick. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, let's touch. That way, I'm not having to really read dials and all that stuff real easy. And we're happen to be going the right direction. Run. Remember that you can go two directions on your K&Ts and your mills. You always want to make sure that you are going in the right rotation according to your tool bit. And uh, normally I would take light cuts about 25 thousandths per side, 50 thousandths. That's, uh, that's what I've got dialed in there right now. And let's see what she'll do. Give me a little chatter. Making sure we got everything down. Try that again. I'm gonna feed it by hand and see if uh, 
see if we don't get it to take a little bit more with just a little more pressure. We went ahead and indexed it. It did look a little damaged, but uh, <clears throat> we're not 100% sure that it was. Now I'm going to come in here and just lightly take a couple passes here because I want to get rid of that chatter if I can. Okay, all right, now I'm sure that we can get a load on here. <clears throat> now I'm gonna bring her into that cut and then engage it. There's four and a half. Little oil. Crank in another 50 thousands here. See if we can start getting a decent cut here. Harmonics wants to follow harmonics sometimes. Here we go. Okay. Let's, let's swap out this insert. For our all around go-to Sandvik ENMP. <laughs> Those chips are melting into my shirt sleeve here. <laughs> all right. This ain't the best shirt sleeve to wear. All right, let's uh, come on out. All right, from there into the next one here should be pretty close to well, it's about sixty thousand. All right, let's see how she handles that. A little less tool pressure with the positive action on this DNMP compared to the uh, the DWL, I believe it is. All right, let's see if uh, let's see if this will take uh, seventy-five thousands here. Here we go. Not quite. We'll just back it back out to about 50. 50 per side. That seems to be a comfortable cut right there. Okay, we're going to take it 50 and we're going to jack up the feed rate just a little bit. Four and a half inches a minute.
All right, that's a good load on the K and T. That's optimizing. It's breaking pretty good. It's got a pretty good finish right there. Every machine, you're going to need to find the sweet spot. Not a bad finish on there. That's some. That's about the toughest pushy stuff that I know that I cut. That did pretty good. Okay, let's go and turn. Let's turn this piece around. Tighten it down pretty good. All right. We want to test this bit out there at that outside with the whole shebang there and see how this would compare the true for the diameter. Remember the other one we started out on the diameter. As you lessen the diameter, cuts change. You might have to adjust it between your cuts. So let's see what this bit does on the outside. Okay, there's our zero. And we're going to crank in. There's 50 thousands right there. We tried the first cut at 25, but I think I'm going to jump right in at 50 thousands. We're at four and a half inches a minute here. That's the, where we ended up at the smaller diameter. I just want a little oil on here. It does help the DNMP with my experience on the lathe. And here we go. I just got the air going just to keep that smoke away from your vision there. So bit and insert do make a difference on different alloys and materials. Do a study and practice your materials. Let's see if they'll do 75. Seventy-five. Slight little bit of oil on here. Make sure my clutch is tight. <laughs> okay, here we go. Seventy-five thousand first side. A little six-inch chuck. Three horsepower on the motor does help. All right, I think we concluded our testing needed to be excited for any of our projects in the future. Okay, sooner or later, we're going to be coming up with a project that we will need this. And, and just having it on hand is the best thing about tooling. If it's over there waiting around, you have an option in your arsenal to get something done in your shop. And that's what this video is all about. It's been sitting around for a long time and I, I know it's always been on my mind and it'd be much nicer if it was ready and it was over there on the table or in the rack ready to go when I actually need it. So nice radiuses. I could turn the table. This adjusts on this two, uh, two HL mill is what this is. And the table can actually cock at uh, running angles, you know, so I can pivot pivot the whole table right on the carriage. So you could do some tapering, okay? I do have the 
taper or the tracer attachment over there compound on the lays you have a lot of different ways of making tapers and stuff so i don't know how much i would get into that but uh bringing over the rotary table setting it down here setting the compound up on the rotary table and being able to do uh, spheres it would probably be nice if you had a rotary table to go ahead and have some kind of a sliding compound in and out on the rotary table uh you don't need to have all kinds of different heights in there just just get the straight flow in and out on a compound and then that way you'd be able to easily just crank in your dimensions on there instead of moving having to loosen and moving and and adjust your your um, your radius or your arc um just the uh what's on on the mind here all right thanks again for all your comments and uh everybody uh, bringing in a little bit of tidbits here and there on the comments i uh, appreciate it a lot all right until next time get her done <laughs>